Like, I don't feel like zoomed out when I'm doing the things like this. I'm like, oh, okay. Because yeah. I can be some, I feel like I'm myself, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. I just definitely feel like I need to take a, a deep breath after after I think that's true. whole a day. I feel like this, not even this day, but like this, a time period. And so I'm wondering if you can take us through the, the process of how this play uh, can't get it. It came to be, you know, you have two daughters. And so just if, if you can take us through your journey in creating this, this play during this uh, time. Yeah. So at the time that um, I was invited to write something, a social justice play. I was doing what I think a lot of black people were doing, just trying to protect my peace and trying to protect my mental health and be as mentally well as I could. Just to take us back to uh, a year ago, um, I was really making a concerted effort to not take in too much media and news because it was really, it was, it was really hurting me. It, I was, it was hurting me and I couldn't, you know, my heart was broken and I just could not, I, it was just getting to be very difficult. And so how I found out about uh, George Floyd's death was through my daughters um, who were, are constantly on media and never, ever take a break. And um, so when I found out it was with them, through them, you know, and then, and then of course, you know, they're on Twitter and they're getting it all. And then I go and I'm just like, and, you know, for me, it was just another, I, I wish I could say, I was just like, I'm so shocked, but I think like a lot of people, I was not shocked. And I was scared about the fact that I wasn't shocked. <laughs> it was just like, you know, what's happening to me? Um, am I becoming numb? Am I becoming, I'm, this is not, this is not wellness. Right. So, um, but last summer i was asked so i was metabolizing all of that as a mother as a black person as a, just just metabolizing pro processing it and um i had through conch shell productions magali coleman uh sent out a call to write a, it was a call to action right like we're as artists we're going to come together and we're going to write something and i remember when i got that email i thought i'm not doing that <laughs> um because not that I hadn't, didn't have anything to say, I had plenty to say, but I was grieving and I just could not, I did not want to go into a space of expressing my grief. I mean, I would express my grief in my journal and all, I didn't want to do it. And I think, so I, I just kind of ignored it. <laughs> and then I was asked two more times and then I realized, okay, I'm supposed to do this. And I, and I understood the, the, um, the power of yes. And I'm so grateful that I did because not only did it give me an opportunity as an artist to serve, which is what I think art should do, it should serve a bigger purpose than yourself, but also it helped me to sort of process where I was as a black mother, where I was as a black person, what does this mean for my own children? You know, so, if we, so it was therapeutic for me and I just poured my grief into it, you know, and then that was that. And I really thought that was that because I honestly wasn't sure that anybody would care what black mothers are thinking. <laughs> Not that I, you know, I mean, that sounds terrible to say, um, but I didn't have any evidence in the world to say that other than seeing us as traumatized, right? Um, after our children are killed, I didn't have any evidence to say that the inner world, the inner um, spirit of black women, black moms, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, how we're navigating this. I had no evidence really to see that 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 was something that 
anybody be interested in. So I was writing this play for myself, for to serve other people to say, hey, you know, when I when I see all of these cases of George Floyd, Ahmaud Aubrey, I mean, I wouldn't even bother listening. The list goes on. The first thing I think about is that was someone's child. And now they're a hashtag. Their their life is a hashtag. So I wanted to give voice to two things. One, the the grief. I wanted to honor the grief of that black parents walk around with every day and have been walking around with, you know, we can go back to Mamie Till and before that. And even just talking about it now, it's getting me, I'm glad I have my fan. <laughs> I came prepared uh, because this is really, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, and I also wanted to honor the voice of young people who, how must they be feeling? right? Like what, what kind of grief are they feeling? And I had to also help my own kids through that grief. So that's what I was trying to just express. And um, I'm glad I did it. Um, I'm so amazed that it's now evolving. Because if you had told me back last summer, I would have thought one and done, you know. Um, but yeah, so that's, and, 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 and I'm still processing. And when you ask me this question, it's, 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 I'm still like, as you know, it continues, right? So it's just, it's just ongoing. Um, I will say that, and it's, it's funny that it's just coming to me. Um, I'm a teacher and I, I teach college students. I've been a teacher my whole adult life and really the the last the the last thing that i had thought about before i was going to write the play was this one student i had in my class her name was Keandra, who was the one of the main characters of the play and she would come to class every day talking about how she was going to these protests and how you know t things that were happening to her emotionally and just all of her grief she would she she would she would connect it to everything in the class and that just really moved me. I mean, I was living with that with my own kids, but I was just like, how are we expecting these kids to be on Zoom and learn things when they're really fearing for their lives? Like, how do you even, so that's sort of all that was in my head. And so I don't even remember the question. Where was I? You know what? I mean, I'm, I feel like I'm still in it. Honestly, I feel like I'm still in it as, as everybody does. Yeah, no, I mean, the question was, was just this journey and and how you got to telling the story the you know call, calling it a story is is a story because it's a fictionalized a version but it's so real in terms of the situation and 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 in terms of of you know, lo losing a friend, a little, a little losing a friend like this, not knowing where that where they are. You know, having your child they disappear from you. I mean, my kids are still small enough, and they're doing art right over there, so that's the extra yeah. noise that we hear. But they, um, I'm not yet at a point where I can even imagine them living not under my roof mm -hmm. and so it's like that just the idea of them kind of being out of the house and then that's one thing that all parents have to go through but then being out of the house and being black you know um is is something i i wrote an essay um right after my son was born called no hoodies for, for my son, which is in the the Washington po, 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 post. And just exploring the, this this idea and, and my, my fear of having a black son, son, son because I felt like he would then have to dress and behave and act a certain way in order for, for for the police to not pay attention to him but also you know knowing that 
my bra brother and my fa fa father and even my ex husband acted and behaved a certain way and that didn't but that doesn't stop the police from looking at at you and i think that's just black men in that that doesn't stop them and so it's it's not something that i can stop you know if i if i you know want my kid to wear slacks every day instead of jeans it's not going to i mean it's in, it's in this aesthetic preference but the police will look, will look at him either way you know i think that you you um, you're talking about something that's very important that i think about all the time which is one of the reasons why i'm so grateful for this uh for this space so you know like you said there are things that parents deal with all the time right um kids have to get their wings they're not going to stay in your nest forever right um at least if things go the way we want them to go they will have lives and aspirations and passions and want to leave and have a bigger life being a black parent i want those same things i i don't i don't not want that so the struggle uh, is um, letting go and but not just letting go in the the normal parent way right and and um, Ta-Nehisi Coates talked about this in between the world and me but it impacts the love and the way you love your children it it can become and I this kind of comes up in the play it can become obsessive and one of the things I am still struggling with and I wanted to express in the piece was a couple of things. One where you said that, um, what happens to the people who are left behind and what is the impact, the grief, the fear, the uncertainty on, and particularly on all of us, particularly on a young person who's not supposed to feel like that. So when I look at my own daughters, um, watching them navigate this, it makes me very sad. Now they're not generally, they're not fearful people. They still want to do, you know, push the envelope. And as my husband always says, it's their job to push and my job to sort of set boundaries. And then we meet in the middle and help them to get their wings. However, when you're living, you know, in this skin, as my father used to call it, you can't deny that there is danger and you can't deny that. Um, I mean, to the point where it's like, you know, you, what do you do with that? I don't have the answer, right? That, that's another thing about the play. I, I just, I'm just putting out a scenario, but we have a character who lost a person that they love, a young person. So what does it do to a young person to lose somebody that they love in that way? Like they're, you're gone like that. It, it, and it's happened to my kids. It has happened in this time. They've lost people just like that. And I've seen the impact and it's devastating. It's devastating. So I was trying to give voice to that, to still wanting to do something, that feeling of helplessness. And part of what's natural about being young is you want to get out there. I have a college student, a freshman, and I have a daughter who just graduated from college. So they're both in places in their lives where they should be out there. And they are. But I would be lying if I didn't tell you every time somebody calls an Uber, every time somebody doesn't answer their phone, which happens frequently. So get ready for that. Um, every time they're just doing fun, normal things. I have to really do work to not awfulize. And as the character in the play, mommy says that that thing that I fear the most will come knocking, knocking at my door. But I am aware that it could, and and it has, and and so what you know to other people. So you you know it's it's really an exploration of what do you do, how do how how do you navigate that as a parent, and and again still encourage your your kids to be all they want to be. I mean I we've had a lot of really great conversations in the in the rehearsal room, and um, I'm a. I'm a believer in you have to let go. I mean, ultimately, you know, like they say, when you write as a, as a playwright, you have to kind of have the answer in your head, even if it's not coming to play. I feel like you have to let go. You have to take a breath, be afraid and let them go. 
because the reality is, is what you said you cannot you can't prevent it now of course um i hate that i'm saying this because my daughter will see this and say see you said it you know it right because i can't pretend i'm ignorant now right because i try to <laughs> i try to act like i don't know i do know and so you know i work really hard to to every day i stay in prayer honestly i stay in prayer and i stay in just keeping my mind right and well so that i can be I, so I'm not oppressive. I'm not another oppressor of my children. But it is, it's, it's, but I, I am, I do grieve for the mothers who, and the parents and the people who lose people all the time to this. I mean, it's to the point where I honestly, Garlia, I'm at the point now where I feel like, you know, I'm really mad. So when it, when you think about the piece, when I first wrote it, I was sad and, and just kind of in a melancholy, but now I'm pissed off. So the so when when I was when I was given the opportunity here to expand it, that was great because I had a whole lot more to say. And right now I'm in a real strong, probably angry phase. <laughs> you know, just like but strong, not just anger, but you know what I mean. Just kind of like I'm. We've had how much time now to to, to you know to think about this, and I'm old enough to to remember that. You know, I, I tell my kids it's like their grandfather father used to say. And there's nothing new under the sun. Like I remember growing up in New York, I'm from New York, I'm from the Bronx and people would be killed and disappear all the time. And it, and this is before internet, before hashtags and everything. Friends of mine, I went to school with and nobody said anything. They're like, oh, so-and-so was killed. So -and, -so. and you kept it moving. You know, it was, it's really weird. So I don't have the answer, but I'm grateful that I'm an artist at a time like this, because I think if I were not an artist, I don't know what I would do with all of this, honestly. I don't know what I would, if I weren't a writer, I don't know what I would do with all that I'm trying to work through. So mm -hmm. I'm very grateful for that. Um, it helps me. Yeah. Yeah. And that takes me into the into the next co co question. And I, I appreciate all that, that you just shared um and also how did, did you start on this jur jur journey you know we've you, you've you've been talking about your work as a as a a play playwright and a and a teacher but what brought you here you know yeah so i i don't think i'm second i can't I, i'm now i'm saying gratitude many times because I, I don't think we we do things so much automatically we don't there's not a lot of time to think about how did it get here? Like, I don't, you know, but when I was thinking about that question, I realized it was motherhood that brought me to theater. So oddly enough, I had never thought about it. So in, when I was pregnant with my second baby, I like to say baby, they're not babies, but I like saying that. <laughs> they're my babies. When I was pregnant with my second baby, I was a stay at home mom. And it was the first time that I had ever just not w worked I was obviously working, but outside the home and um, I was nursing <laughs> and I was pretty, I was pretty, uh, I had, I already had a toddler and I had a baby. And so I was pretty like, my life was pretty like around them. Right. Um, and so I remember I was nursing and I had always been a writer, but um, I couldn't move a lot, you know, because I, I had the baby on me all the time. <laughs> so it's like, so I was always, you know, and I started writing this story that was born out of my thoughts about being a black mother. Oddly enough, Garlia, I was thinking about I'm a I'm a I'm a history buff. I love anything historical. And, you know, I'm very always been very interested in um, slavery stories because I'm very interested in where we I'm interested in how that has impacted where we are now. I'm, I've always that's just been a baseline. And because I was, uh, no, I wasn't, was I, you know, now I'm thinking about it. The story came to me when I was pregnant. And then I started writing when I was, had the baby. When I was pregnant, and this might sound so morbid, but I hope that you <laughs> understand it. I was thinking if I were a mother in 1850, who thinks this? Writers, that's who. What would my life be like? And I thought, wow, my life would be, one thing would be is that I'd be in having to face the fact that this baby might be taken away from me. Like I, I, this baby, I'm nine months pregnant and I may never see this baby. Like, I, I don't know. And I don't know why I thought that, but 
maybe with some actually maybe with some of the ancestors like i was really in it and i just started thinking about this story of this character ruth and um how that was her dilemma that she had been forced to be the uh the master's uh I don't know. He, you know, I don't even know what you want to call it. Belong to the master in a in a sexual way, right? And um, how she had that had always been her experience. But then she fell in love with a black another a black man, a slave, and how that was a love. And so I started thinking about what, how did people at that time maintain their love, maintain their families, maintain marriages within this oppressive, violent structure? Why am I having these thoughts while I'm not much pregnant? I don't know. Anyway, that long story short, that gave birth to my first play, Ascension. And um, I didn't write that play for months. Like just really just, I was just, it was just in me. I was just thinking about it. I was thinking about Ruth. I was thinking about her, her husband, Jacob, like they were people. And I would talk about it all the time, but I, but I was only nursing. <laughs> and one day I said, I'm going to write it down. And I did. And I mean, I don't want to say, and the rest is history, but it was my first production. I wasn't trying to say, I wasn't trying to write a play for a production. I was trying to write a play. I was trying to write a play and tell a story. And I did. And it resonated and, you know, but it mostly it resonated with me. And it was another example, like now, it gave me an opportunity to, to metabolize these fears. I guess it was fear of having babies and what it was going to mean and being a black and what, what does this mean? You know? Um, but that's what brought me to it. And once I was in it, then you know how that works. Then you're just in it. Then it just keeps going. But I will say in addition to the, uh, in addition to the support of my husband of, of you should keep going. Cause I was just thinking I wrote one play. I don't, you know, I, it was a mother in my life at that time who pushed me on, who said, you know what you should do? You should submit that to this. You should, and she's not even a playwright. She's not even, she's not in the theater. She just was like, so I think just think that's really important how women, black women, other parents can support each other. Like this space is supportive. And I think that, and, and supportive in the way that it's giving voice to something and people who need a voice, but also, I don't know. I just love the, 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 the dynamic of that. And so, I, I mean, I think for me, you know, and, and that was a long time ago. So that was, we're in 2021. So I've been writing plays for 16 years. So it's not like this was yesterday, but I will say this, there is something very interesting about being a parent. And I can only speak about mothering. When my play first play opened and it was a black woman who gave me a shot. I just love that. I can keep saying that in Boston opening night. This is the first thing I've ever done. I've never written any other play. I think I've written, maybe I've written one screenplay years before, but it was like in my drawer, right? And someone came up to me to interview me and asked me, are you the playwright? And I said, no, I'm the person who wrote the play because I couldn't even call myself a playwright. And I know it was because I'm nursing. I've got this toddler. I mean, when I think about it, I think, who, what, what was I thinking? That's who I was. I was a mom and I was, you know, not that I wasn't an artist, but I was like, and I come from a family of artists. So it was a, I just felt so in my momming, mommying that I couldn't really make that leap. So I just, I don't know why I shared that. That's just something that I, I always like to remember when I'm in spaces now. And if I'm afraid and I think, I think back to that moment, I'm like, that was crazy town. <laughs> Like, like no. you're doing it, <laughs> but but it's but it it's so true. I mean, one of the reasons that um, all of this this really ma matters is because black parent playwrights need the space and the time and the resources to be able to do their work, mm -hmm. and I think. My, many of us have written in the middle of the night once the kids are asleep and you know like that's what all that's that's not exclusive to black pa parents that's exclusive to to uh parents right but there's also the thing about the resources so sources and the thing just to just about um 
be, being able to to have that time as a parent again this is a like parents in, in general need the need the space and time so a parent pl- a play a playwright just needs m- more sub- sub- support support but the stories that I think we need to be hearing and the stories that are not told are the stories that involve uh, black parents. And so that really is a, such an important thing here and to be able to create space. Like I truly hope that at the end of this festival, we raise enough so that, you know, one playwright and maybe two, if people are really generous, right, can take time off from whatever it is that they normally do. And and it's, it's not just about time off because for parents, you have kids. So time off when you have kids really means that the kids are going to say, "Oh, you have more time with me." But when you're when you're a when you are a when you write, and in particular for this festival, when you are a playwright, you need that a uh, time. So there needs to be resources to go to child care and whatever that means at the age that your kids are. When they're small, it means something. When they're older, it means something else. That's up to you. But what what it means is that resources need to be there so that the so that the the, the parent can schedule their life in such a way where they can devote their time to working on their script, novel, you know, all of these things. You know, in particular we're focused on the theater and I really hope that there are a papa a papa a papa a papa partnerships that come with the a papa a partner theaters too and and that is such a a beautiful and exciting thing that um that 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 we have so I really look a lot love that that part and 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 I really hope that you know some more some more space can be created for for more of us you know and so that these these plays so that you so are you thinking of expanding it beyond what you have here or you know what is the future of this play because you did expand it a little bit um, well, a lot. Uh, not, not a, 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 you 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 did a substantial ex- ex- expansion d- d- during the time in the festival that you between the time when, when we told you you were a finalist and when rehearsal started, you had a quite a bit of um, time. And then the p- point of that was also to make sure that you had time to de- develop the play. And the festival focuses more on the development of the play as opposed to producing a technical uh, a lot of, uh, you know you know p- putting a FaceTime thing on the screen we're here to really make sure you had time with the with the play mm-hmm. so how yeah well I would say that you know what what and and what you said about time it's really important because um I didn't I I actually reimagined the play differently you know like I did I really I did a real rewrite like I didn't just make it longer. Like I or or I it, it's actually I I actually took the situation and said how can I change the situation, and I think that for a writer to be able to do that you do need time you need space but you also need to have a space where you feel like you can someone's going to value that voice. I mean it, it you know it, it's one thing to say parent artists need space and time. I've been very fortunate um, because of being a person that teaches and, and the things I've done in my life, I've always been able to find space to, to for writing. Um, I've always been able to do that. I know that most people do not have that. That That's not like I've, you know, they just don't have that. I've, I've like, I've always had summers off, <laughs> you know, things like that. But even with that, even with that, 
I do think it's important, and this is where I think that parents can support each other, artists. You know, you have to change the way you do things, right? Like I'm a morning person. I am great. You get me a 5.30, I'm like in the morning. But when it gets to be 5.30 in the PM, I'm like, I don't want to do it anymore, right? The point is, is that I used, when, when I was started writing and, and I really was my, the bulk of my career has been as a parent and m most of it has been as kids, school age children, I had to just move, get over myself with that. Like I, I had to, it's like, I had to stay up all night and that was not even something I was doing in college, <laughs> but that's what I had to do if I wanted to do my art. So I do think that that can be a real support system because I know when I was, my kids were much younger and even now it's sort of like how do artists do it like what what are the things that people can share that how it works you know what i'm saying and and i think the biggest thing that i've learned is that it doesn't always work it's hard and you and and you have to push through some things but you've got to change some paradigms but as far as the play going forward um something that i i learned now i know as an artist i didn't know 10 years ago was that i i I never know what the opportunity is going to be. I'm just willing to say yes. You know, I just, I just say yes as much as possible. In fact, there was a, a year, I, I'm not sure you heard of Shonda Rhimes. She had the book, The Year of Yes, and she had a whole TED talk about it. And I did that experiment for a year. I said yes, which okay. meant that I had things I was saying yes to that I was petrified. Like I really was thinking no, but I was like, yes. And that was a very transformative year for me because it broke me out of this. You're just a mom who writes which I, again, I hate even, I'm just saying that so that people know, like, I'm sure that's in people's consciousness sometimes. I'm absolutely not that. I'm absolutely not that. I'm, but I will say that, so going forward with the piece, who knows, you know? I, I, I would say this, it, it helped me to work on a lot of different muscles, uh, writing muscles that I wanted to work on. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm not, as gloom and doom as some people are about this new environment we're in in theater, I feel like these are just opportunities. I believe that probably in five years we're going to say, wow, can you believe we were fighting against that? Like, that's only how it goes. You know, I mean, I, I feel like this is a new frontier. So it helps me in that way. Um, and I'm excited about uh, where all of my work can go. I'm always, I always want to go back. And, you know, a friend of mine gave me a card years ago it was a, it's a maya angelou quote and I'm, I'm paraphrasing she said um everything you do is not going to be a masterpiece but you get art there and you try and the other times you're just stretching your soul so this this process with the festival is stretching my soul because i'm being forced to yes write about i'm getting my getting my feelings and that's good but i'm also getting to really work with some other people work with people who are like-minded and that really helps me like like i'm talking to you right now and i've got a message that just came across from my daughter in college can you tell daddy well like you know it's like this is my life but this is a skill right it's a yeah it's a skill it's kind of like i just okay. did some snap you know, you know, what that was, but i did some finger swipe. <laughs> swipe. Yeah, because at the end of the day i'm mom but i but in, in closing with that i want to say this um I think that there will be there. This piece has given me a lot of ideas for other pieces that I want to write. Um, but I'm just open. I'm just trying to be open. And I'm so grateful for all of these spaces of the invitation like to do it. Um, it's like oneness for me. I'm managing my worlds. It's not like I'm a mother and I'm this. I'm like just one person. And I've been wanting that for a really long time, you know, and I've, I think that that's important. Just one person. So um, I, I will say that for me, just the mother part, I want to be a model to my daughters. I can't do anything about all the other craziness that's going on in the world. I can't do anything about that. I, I really can't. I can do my best, but I, I don't know what's going to happen with that. But what I can do is I can be a model for my daughters that if there's something that you want to do in your life, do it. Don't be afraid because you're a black woman. People are going to tell black women they can't do all kinds of things. Just do it. And, and and I hope that when I'm no longer here, I'm very, I'm, I can be very dark. <laughs> I'm saying that, I always say to them, remember that what mommy did. Remember those nights you saw me up all night. Remember those things. You, my mother used to tell me, always keep something for yourself. My art is my thing for myself and share with other people.
That's it. And it doesn't matter if you're a mother or a wife or whatever you do, or you're not a mother or wife and you decide not to do any of those things, but you can do whatever you want. It's yes and. and that's it. Oh, yes, and I and. love that. That's um, something the pal f f founder, Ray Rachel Spencer Hew Hewitt says, says often. And so hello. it's all true. It's, it's true it that you have a son and a daughter and they're beautiful and black and that this world doesn't always value them. But it's also true that they are deeply loved and it's true that sometimes there are dangerous spaces, but it's also true that sometimes everything's okay. And that's the thing that my daughters are trying to teach me and I, the lesson from them. Every time they come back home, I say, they are, it was okay. And that's true, you know? And I, and I love working with you anyway. Like, I think I worked with you like years ago and I was just like, I like working with her. I hope I get to work with her again. Like, <laughs> I feel like I am getting to work with you again. I love that. You know, I, just, I know I feel this, I feel this uh, same way when I saw that you were one of, you know, one of the choices that it's yeah. exciting. You are, I, I am so moved by all that you do, the spaces you create for black mothers for black women, for black people all the time, even if there wasn't a festival, you were doing it anyway. And I am just, I, your courage inspires me, your courage, your strength, your wherewithal, your, your intelligence. It, just so you know, there are, I'm one of the people watching you from a, from a distance thinking, if she can do that, I can do that. You know, like that's, it's really important. Representation is so, and it, I just want to let you know, for me personally, it is, we talk about you in our house even before this. We're like, oh. <laughs> I think that being a mother and being a black mother feeds vision. I just think it feeds it. I think it's a superpower.